seems like everybody's riding round and round on the rim of the wheel. Me, I like to ride close to the axle. That way, you don't get shook up so bad. Can't understand why so many folks spend so much time and energy on the rim of the wheel, when it's so much simpler and easier to stay right close to the axle. I know time is flying, so many things to do today, but just how important are those important things? Nowadays, it seems like some folks are always on the go, always in a hurry, always in a hurry to get somewhere, always in a hurry to get nowhere. That's just the way it was with Virginia Sutton. clothes. How many times must I tell you not to hang the colored pieces with Mr. Sutton's white shirts? Can't you ever learn? I'm sorry, Mrs. Sutton. I scrubbed the colored pieces so hard I forgot what you said about the white shirts. Well, it's inexcusable, Rosalie. I don't think I'll be needing you any longer. Uh, Mrs. Sutton, you... When my mother passed on, you told me I could take her place. And I... I know I did, but I have to have a fish help, Rosalie. I'm too busy to be here all the time to show you how to do everything. Good afternoon, Virginia. How are you? Well, hello, Mrs. Hammond. Oh, what a day. This morning, I had to help Kent out at the office. Then I dashed over for PTA. After that, there was a committee meeting. Tonight, it's Hobby Club. And I still have to get dinner ready. Virginia, you're all upset. It's been such a hot day. Let me make you some lemonade. Oh, that sounds so good. But I just don't dare well, take it'll the time. It'll be another half hour before your boys come home from school. Just long enough to relax a bit. Do come. I think I will. Thank you. Do sit down, dear. Oh, relax. Mm, that looks good. Have a cookie. Mmm, these are delicious. You must show me how to make them. Well, I'll be delighted. But you're always so very busy. Oh, you can say that again. Frankly, I just don't know where my time goes. By the way, I've been wanting to talk to you about some plans for our Bible classes. But you're not up to it now, are you, dear? Please, not today, Mrs. Hammond. I'm sorry. It's just that things seem to pile up so. Frankly, I've even been thinking I might have to give up some of my church activities in oh, order... Oh, Virginia, it can't possibly be that bad. Well, you just don't realize. I never have a minute to myself. Tell me, how did you ever manage when your four girls were growing up? Oh, by putting first things first. You know, Virginia, many of us spend most of our time doing things which really don't matter. That's almost a sermon. Well, I didn't mean it to be, dear. It's just that, well, it has helped me and I'd like to pass it on to you. I could never have managed without that formula. I couldn't manage now without it. Not a day ever passes, but that I have a quiet period of communion with God. And whatever the amount of time I've spent has been more than compensated by... Hey, made some lemonade? Of course, Dad. Come, sit here with us. How are you, Mr. Dickerson? Oh, Fred, of Midland. Please do sit down, Dad. No, I'll take mine with me. I can't abide women, especially gallivanting women. I'll be back for dinner. Well, that's the first time I've ever been called gallivanting. Oh, you mustn't take what Dad says seriously. Honestly, I don't know which is the harder to manage. 80-year-old Dad Dickerson or 9-year-old Tommy. <laughs> Tommy's your husband's nephew, isn't yes. he? Yes. He was orphaned when he was two. You know, it's very kind of you to make a home for both your father and Tommy. 
Well, after a house full of girls, it's nice having a boy to raise. Which reminds me, it's time for Billy and Johnny to come home. I've got to run. Johnny, you slice that while I cut this. Yeah, let's have church up nursing, huh? Okay. Johnny. Boys, leave things alone. Johnny, that loaf was for supper. Can't we even have a teeny weeny piece, please, Mom? No, dear, no. Look at this mess. Let me tell you about the ball game, Mom. Not you now, honey. Not now. What's wrong, Mom? Don't you feel good? Of course I do, dear. It's just that I'm in a hurry to get supper. Here. This should hold you till then. Now scoot outside and play. in the house. Okay, darling. And you must talk to the boys about messing up this kitchen. When I came in, here they were with immense knives trying to cut some bread. You should have seen the mess Johnny made with the ketchup all over the floor. Oh, Jenny, you're taking it too seriously. How'd it go this afternoon? Oh, what a day. Full afternoon, huh? So full, I'm going in circles. Here, give me a hand with this, will you? What's the big hurry, Jenny? But it isn't even six o'clock yet. I still have to hurry. Hobby club tonight. Why not pass it up? Oh, I can't. Not tonight. Jean Silva will be there. Think of all the pointers I can get from her on my painting. <coughs> hey, would you get the boys in now and have them wash up for dinner? And don't dilly-dally with them. I can't be late for this meeting. Okay, honey. Can we please be excused? Can we go watch television, Mom? I suppose so. Go ahead, you're excused. Come on. By the way, we'll need another girl. I had to let Rosalie go. You what? Kent, I simply couldn't stand her any longer. She just can't do anything right. You'll find it hard to get another girl as honest or as good with the children. Besides, Rosalie's Della's daughter. Honey, I can't help it if Della's been with your family and Rosalie happens to be her daughter. I simply couldn't put up with her inefficiencies any longer. But couldn't you be a little more patient? Couldn't you try to teach her to... Honey, I haven't the time. Yes, I know. Maybe you ought to slow down, Jenny. Maybe you're putting too much emphasis on some things, not enough on others. Another sermon. That's twice today. What do you mean, another sermon? I don't get it. No, I... Well, it's nothing, I guess. <gasps> I still have to dress. Honey. Honey, would you stack up the dishes, please? Yeah, sure. I'll wash them after I put the boys to bed. Oh, you don't have to do that. I can do them in the morning. And don't let the boys stay up too late, huh? Sutton, where were you last night? At a club meeting. Why? Well, if you ask me, I think you're doing too much silly gallivanting. But I didn't ask you. But I'm telling you, you're a... Uh, Sorry, I haven't the time. I'm in a hurry. Haven't time. Always in a hurry. So much time spent on the flesh, but nothing on the spirit. Now and look here, Dad Dickerson. I think now, don't my... you look here, Dad Dixon, to me, young lady. 
It's about time you realize that life's something to be appreciated, to be lived, enjoyed. You can't do it when you're always on edge, always ready to snap at something. Now you've got a fine husband, and young ones too. Now it seems to me that you are... Don't get me! Don't get me! Then I can! Then I can! Billy! Johnny, look at this! I'm sorry, Mom. It was lonely and accident. Accident! It was just plain carelessness, inexcusable carelessness. Now you get back in the house and sit in a chair till I tell you you can get up. Sweet. Oh, hi, honey. Here. What's for dinner? I didn't have a chance to go to the store. This is catch as catch can. So I see. Uh, more can than catch, huh? Don't be like that. After all, I can't do the impossible, you know. Besides, we'll be having a snack later at the country club. At the country club? Oh, I made a date with the Tylers. We're meeting them at 8. Well, could we phone the Tylers up and call it off tonight? Oh, we can't do that. You know we need all those social contacts for your business. Yes, I suppose so. But there are times when I'd like to stay home and relax a bit. Just with you and the children. Oh, so would I. But in this day and age, you've got to keep going. I wonder. We're on the go so much, I'm beginning to feel like a kangaroo on a pogo stick. Well, would you rather be like the Davises? Always struggling to make ends meet? No, I guess not. I know we have to think about the children and their future and... Hey, what about the children? What about them? Well, since you let Rosalie go, who's going to stay with them tonight? Oh, Mrs. Hammond next door. She's going to babysit with them. Oh. Well, if you can stand the pace, I guess I can. Now, don't you boys give Mrs. Hammond any trouble. It was very kind of her agreeing to come over, so I don't want to hear any bad reports. And I told her that you were nice. That must be her now. Evening. Good evening. Dad Dickerson, isn't Mrs. Hammond coming? I had unexpected company. Told me to come over and look after the young ones. She'll be over just as soon as she's free. Well, do you think you can handle the boys all right? <laughs> well, now, that's a mighty fine looking Western village you have there. Mighty fine. All except maybe that, uh, post office. What's the matter with it, Mr. Dickerson? Well, now, I never saw a post office like that when I was out west. Was you out west? Did you fight Indians and bad men? I sure did. Fought lots of bad men. Will you tell us about it? Whoa. What kind of guns did you shoot them with? Well, now, son, I didn't use a gun. I fought them with a book. A book? Rustlers and bad men with a book. Well, there's one book that's more powerful than all your gun shoot. That's the Bible. You see, you can shoot a bad man, but you can never kill whatever it is that made him become bad in the first place. But the Bible can do more than bullets can. Now, you be good boys, and remember, in bed by nine. Yes, your mom. Oh, Mommy, look what you've done. Oh, I'm sorry, honey, it was an accident. But you ruined it. But uh, your ma said it was an accident, didn't she, son? Oh, come on now, boys. Don't be such crybabies. Why don't you and Mr. Dickerson go in the kitchen and get that cardboard box and make another one? Sure, and while we're about it, we'll fix that post office, too. Then I'll tell you about Rawhide Pete, the day that he and I had the battle. He was two six-shooters, and me was just a Bible. You know, he rode through a street just like that, headed for my mining camp. When he got there, he looked up, and all he saw, there, there you are, son. You know something, Mr. Dickerson? You're a swell babysitter. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you came instead of Mrs. Hammond. Well, that's nice of you, boys. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't 
Don't you boys say your prayers? Yeah, after we're in bed. Oh, after you're in bed. Supposing tonight we say them the way they ought to be. This day is over, Lord, and we thank you for the blessings. We thank thee for saving us from our sins and sorrows. Save us by day and guard us by night and lead us ever onward through the mercy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mr. Dickerson, if it hurts, why do you pray on your knees? Well, that's the only way to pray, son. This wise for me. Keeps reminding me to be humble and submit myself to the will of the Lord. All right, now. In the bed. Come on. That's it. Tomorrow's another day. Hey, uh, son. Uh, wrap yourself up. And I'll tell you about Rawhide Pete's brother Pinto. Ha! <laughs> Good night. Good morning. I called to get the knitting my daughter left here last night. Oh, yes, I'll get it for you. And I want to thank you for staying with the boys until she could come over. Oh, don't thank me. It's a pity you couldn't have stayed here last night to see the pleasure I got out of it. By the way, what time did you get home last night? Now, look here, Dad Dickerson. I now, think... don't you look here, Dad Dickerson, to me, young lady. I know what I'm talking about. Now, you listen to me. My daughter was just like you are. Always gallivanting. Mrs. Hammond? That's right. Years back, she was just like you are today. Always running after something not worth running after. Always on edge. Always on the go. Trying to gather a little quicksilver. Now, uh, don't you think that you ought to stop all of this and get off the rim of the wheel? The rim of the wheel? That's right. Get off the rim and get closer to the actual, to be close to God and at peace. How can anybody be at peace nowadays? This is a troubled world. And troubled world, fiddlesticks. This same old world has been troubled for the last 2,000 years. But Jesus was at peace, wasn't he? Don't you think that you're paying too much for what you're getting? Maybe. But in this day and age, you've got to keep going or you'll be left by the wayside. It's the modern tempo. Why, well, even our minister is always urging us to do more than we can. But doing more for God and the church is a heap different than riding that merry-go-round you're on. But our business and social activities are part of our lives, too. True, true, but there's a happy medium for everything, young lady. Look at you. You're all tuckered out. One step ahead of a fit. Soon you're going to have that man of yours in the same fit. And them young ones, too. Now, you don't want that, do you? You know something? You get off the rim of that wheel and get close to the axle. You won't get shook up so much. Now, look at me. I'm an old man. But I've always lived close to the Lord. Close to the center. The actual. And he's blessed me with many years, happy years, of peace and contentment. You too can be at peace with the Lord <laughs> and the world. Now, now, there's no need of. There's no need of. <laughs> well, maybe there is too. You just have a cry. A good cry. You tell the Lord all about it. How long is it going to take now? Oh, just a few minutes. Oh, boy, Dad looks scrumptious. Dad's going to like that. I'm sure he will. No, I think that's all right. Go ahead and start. Hello, honey. Hi. Hi, my boy. 
What's for supper? Supper's super tonight. <laughs> supper swell. Why don't you take a look? Let's go, Johnny. Come on out. Mm. Things seem different around here lately. Everything seems more uh, peaceful and quiet. Well, that's because the Suttons are no longer riding the rim of the wheel. The rim of the wheel? It took me a while to make up my mind to get off the merry-go-round. But believe me, from now on, we're putting first things first. <laughs> you know, I like the way things are working out around here. So do I. Thanks to old Dad Dickerson, bless his heart. Dad Dickerson? Mm-hmm. He's the one who helped me get off the rim of the wheel. As he puts it, stay close to the axle. Yes, sir. Stay close to the axle. That way you don't get shook up so bad. That way you, too, can be at peace with God and with the world.